Today we're going to take a look at Azure Active Directory and how to secure your web API with Azure AD authentication using an Angular JS SPA single page application front end. So here we have a GitHub project that includes two essential things. The first is a web API project which will use Azure AD authentication to protect it. You can make web APIs by default. They're anonymous, open to any HTTP get and post. That's not the kind of thing we want to put on the internet. We want to make sure endpoints are secured. We can opt in to Azure AD security for our web API endpoints so that only people within our tenant are able to connect to that API. On the front end, we have an Angular JS, Angular 1 SPA, single page application. And this is going to use the ADAL library for doing the authentication and adding the HTTP headers. The user experience is one of a redirect. You're on the single page application, you redirect to the login screen, put in your username, password, redirect back to the application, and now it has an identity and it knows who we are. And then the application will add these HTTP headers to all of our gets and posts, which send over to the API. And by adding those headers, the API knows, okay, cool, you're logged in, you have an authorization token, you're authorized to use this API. So we have a front end and a back end. We'll go ahead and download the source code, which we have here, and we'll open it up with Visual Studio. Excellent. Now going back and looking at the instructions, our step two is going to be to register the API service with our Azure Active Directory tenant. Here I'm logged into Azure Active Directory and on the left hand side we'll see we have Azure Active Directory and I can go to App Registrations. And here's where we're going to do new application registration. From the instructions, we'll give it a friendly name of Togo API. And we're going to do this from the back forward. So our first step is to register the API. Here's the URL to be running at. It's a local host URL because we're going to hit F5 in Visual Studio and run it locally. So we'll go ahead and add that API. We're going to want to open up the properties and make some adjustments. So let's open Togo API, go to All Settings, Properties, and down here we have the app ID URI. App ID URI. We're going to want to change that a little bit. But first things first, we need to copy the application ID to the clipboard. Here's a GUID number for application ID. I'm going to put that in Notepad and I'm going to label it as API. So that is our GUID number for the API. Because remember, there's two components an API on the back and a spa on the front. Let's go over to the instructions again and we're going to have this URL where we replace your tenant name with the name of our tenant. Our tenant here is this identifier and they're all going to end with onmicrosoft.com. So something.onmicrosoft.com essentially is our app ID URI. A little bit more of a, a friendly unique identifier than the GUID. So we'll go ahead and click save on those changes. And we'll move on to step three. So here we're going to edit the API's web config to provide a tenant and an audience. So let's pop over to Visual Studio and open the config for the API. Here we can see in it, enter your tenant name, which we'll go back over to Notepad, highlight the onmicrosoft.com portion, and here they have Contoso on Microsoft.com as their example. And we're going to put in the full app ID URI, which essentially is HTTPS, tenant name, slash, to go API. More again of a, a unique identifier. And then this is the tenant which is hosting it. So we're kind of telling it, what's, what's my name? What's my name as an API? A primary key, a unique name. And then, oh, what, what tenant am I connecting to? Which Azure Active Directory instance is going to be doing my, my authentication? So that's the, the heart of that one. Go ahead and put in those two settings. <clears throat> we're going to want to enable cores. Okay. And then after that, we'll look at AppJS endpoints. Let's go and check that one out. There's a, a good thing to look at here. So over in endpoints, we put the root location. And again, there's that app ID URI. 
So let's go ahead and put those same values down here. <clears throat> and so the first part is port 44327. There we go. That's the name and then the value. So a mapping of the API endpoint to its resource identifier. So here's where we're running the API and here's how that maps to a resource. So it's kind of a, a mapping table for the, for the endpoints. Excellent. So don't worry about the other values. We'll come back. We're going to go to to-go list service over here. Excellent. To-go list service. And we'll replace the API endpoint value. Enter the root location of your API here. So this is wherever we're running it. Where's the, the live endpoint that we can talk to the API? So this is how the service will do its connection. And you can see how this kind of flows through the code. That the API endpoint is referenced multiple times as, as a sort of prefix for doing all the HTTP traffic. Excellent. It's got to know where to send the traffic. Step four, we're going to register the spa, the front end. So we're going to have a friendly name, very much like the process we were just doing for the API. We'll go ahead and step back here just a little bit. New application, put in the friendly name, and we're going to put in the sign-on URL. We'll be hosting this on 44326. Slightly different port number. 26 is the spa, 27 is the API. So we'll open that up and we're going to copy the ID to the clipboard yet again. So we'll come to properties, take this, copy it down here, say OK, there's our SPA ID number. Excellent. <clears throat> On permissions, select required permissions, we're going to grant it access to the API. So the SPA is allowed to, to call the API. So we'll hit add, select an API, and there's a search dialog and we can type in the name of anything we've registered on our tenant. There's a few default Microsoft ones. Ah, but look, we'll put in the name, there's a search result, we'll click select, and we'll do the checkbox. Delegated permissions. Access the to-go API. So we selected an API, gave it a permission, we'll hit done. Excellent. <clears throat> Grant permissions across your tenant for your application. Under Settings, Properties, Required Permissions, click on Grant Permissions in the top bar. So after selecting it, we still have to do this one more step of Grant Permissions. It says, do you want to grant permissions to all accounts in the current directory? This is sort of saying, OK, the SPA connects to the API, first step. Oh, and also, we want to grant that to everybody in our tenant. Anybody in our tenant can use this SPA. OK, cool. We'll hit yes. Enable OAuth implicit grant for your application. The former steps, OAuth implicit grant, in order to explicitly opt in. OK, so your browser should still be open. We're going to change the manifest. So over here on the to-do spa, there's a manifest button. This kind of opens the fancy notepad button. Down here on line 17, we have an OAuth implicit flow. We're going to toggle that over to true. Hit save. Successfully updated. OK. Find the property, change it true. Excellent. Configure the SPA to use your Active, Active Directory. Configure the SPA to use your Azure Active Directory tenant. Open the solution in the SPA. Find the, find the web config. So on our top project, we do have a web config. We need a tenant and an audience. So again with the tenant name, whatever.onmicrosoft.com. Go ahead and paste that in. And here we're going to put the ID number for the SPA. It says client ID. And this will become part of the HTTP calls that are going back and forth, which will tell it, yes, we are using this particular registration right there. 8, A, 0, whatever. That's the same thing here. We want our SPA to have that identifier so it can loop into all these permissions we've granted it. So we've done step 3 and 4, tenant and audience. Now we need to go look at app.js for the init function call. So let's go over there to app.js. 
we find our init call. Sure enough, we need to put in the tenant and client ID. Exact same stuff that's up here, but we need to put it at the JavaScript level so that the front end has the same information. So there's our tenant name. Here is our web config from the SPA project. We're still in the SPA project. We're going to put the client ID number in and we're going to hit save. So that takes care of everything in step six. It says run the sample. In my working with this project, there was one other thing that tripped me up. And that one other thing had to do with NuGet package dependencies. What we'll go ahead and do is collapse our project, close all of our open windows, select SPA and package manager console. Down here, we're going to type update package and hit enter. So having run the update package command, the next thing we want to look at is moving down the JWT version to 4. There was a breaking change released in 5, which causes some authentication issues with this particular project. So we're going to go ahead and run the install version 4 on both the SPA and the API projects. So now we'll go ahead and build our project. After successfully building both projects, we can highlight the solution on the right and press F5 to play. Here we'll see the API project open on 44327, and 44326 will have our GUI for the front end. In the top right corner, in the top right corner, we see a login button. I can go ahead and click that to log in to Office 365. Here I'm prompted and I'll click my name to continue. We see a redirect message with a series of dots and a prompt for password. After entering the password, we can click sign in to continue and we're redirected back to our application. Now that login redirect experience is really important. It's smooth for the end user and familiar to everything else they do in Office 365. Now we're going to see a log out message in the top right corner, which tells us that we are actively logged in. Clicking user on the navigation bar, we navigate to the user data route, and what do we see? All of your ID token content. So here we have email address, first and last name, the identity provider, we have all these various serial numbers, a unique identifier key, and all of our authentication token data is now active in our AngularJS application. So if we navigate to the other routes, to-do list and to-go list, we should be able to interact with data. Navigating to the to-do list route, we see a text box where we can add and remove items. I'm going to go and open up the console in the bottom just so we can see a little bit more detail about our route navigation and the logging. <clears throat> so I'm going to put new and hit add idea here. And as you can see, items are added to the list and it's tracking well. On the to-go list, <clears throat> we see more debug data with all the authentication tokens. And some of this should look familiar. These are the same things that we were putting in web config and over in the app.js file for how the SPA front end will connect to its API on the back end. And these are the authentication tokens being handled by ADAL.js. So on this one, I can go ahead and put in new idea here. We can see items added. And this is happening in an authenticated API it's pushing data to the to-go API, which is a portable SQL local DB. And so if I navigate routes and come back, the data is preserved. It's still here as I do my navigation. The data is kept. And you can even stop and restart the project, log out, log back in. But we have persisted data to a secure web API, which is protected by Azure AD. Our users logged in, we see all of their authentication token details, and the ADAL.js library is handling the authentication for Angular 1. Thanks for watching.